the operating system. Then there is the number one, number two right there. So this is called the process ID or PID. So each process has the ID. So first process usually zero or one, depending on the operating system. They assign the number as by zero or one. So some of the operating system use the CC, D, or something different, init D, something different to me. So this is a kernel process started first time. So when we are saying the starting computer, doing the computer means creating first process, loading the kernel image to the memory. Okay? Then the, this is computer, this is acting, do something. Then, what's the main job of the, this first process? Creating child process. Child process. So, what's the main job of the Adams and Eve? <laughs> child. Okay. Child. And what is my first job as a parent? To teach? No. To raise. My child. <laughs> so, the, the process creates the child process. And this child process creates your child process. And the process, finally you have the, like the, for example, terminal. This is a terminal process. That's the reason it's called the terminal. It's at the end of process tree. I think that this much. The student can end. No more. So let's say this is the terminal process. That's a reason it's called the terminal usually. Right? Where you can take the bus. Because it's the end. Starting and end of the bus route. Or the something, the train. So it's at the end process tree. Where user can use computer. Okay. At this time, the, this terminal uses a specific program that's called the shell. So shell is most outside. Does it look like the shell? <laughs> Client? Right. So it's a shell. So shell process is most outside the program by which the user can use computer. Okay. So. The, for example, bone share, C share, K share, something share, bunch of share program. Among them that we are using, map OS use, so it's a kind of the descendant of the bone share, it's a G share as a default. But the more popular the share program is a bash share. So bash shell is actually the almost copy of the bone shell and a little bit more improvement. The G shell and bash shell is kind of sibling twin. So slightly different. So each operating system only has one shell? Good question. What do you think? Yes. Yes. You can use one, but operating system provides all of this. Mm -hmm. Even you can install. Your first project, programming assignment, is to create your own shell, like the UV shell. You will create this one. This is your the first project. What is the first step? Most important, the job of the, this shell. What do you think? So what do you think? What is the most important job of the shell? Keep everything uh, processing or like running correctly, I guess. Two words. Two words. <laughs> running command. Running command. Oh. Almost. In other words, what is the job of this? Everything. Creating process. So running job means because you already you are taking operating system, so you can answer right now. Creating process. So it's the same thing. So when you are doing your job, running the program, that means we need to create the process. Okay, then, so this, the shell, main job, there are a lot of commands, but the 
All this job is based on what? By creating process. What process can list the process? One, uh, the, another process can list the file. Another process to access the something. So word process create the word job. So creating process. So you are going to create your own shell. Right? So main job is what? Creating process. Is it difficult? No. Operating system also provide the all the library to create the process. Okay? So we will see later in more details. So this is a then the, all the processes are created, then you are ready to use the computer. This is the overall thing. What's going on when you plug it? Your, the, uh, the power, then the, what's going on inside the computer. Then, what is the, what is the operating system? What is the main job of the such operating system? So all of this, so operating system, as I said, provide the how to create the process, like the library, API, system API. So they manage such a process, like that. And once the, your, the system is ready, but the way the creating the first process, so all the job is managed by the operating system. In other words, so you are asked, by the, your manager. So we'd like to create a new operating system, which means you are going to create a new program that create a new process and then try the process and manage the, the, your computer system. So operating system is like the hardware and user in between everything in between computer and the user, and it's a software. So we are going to see the more details of the, this one throughout the semester. Okay, then to do that, it's a real, there are two point of view from the hardware, computer. And also we can view the operating system from the user view. We are very familiar with the, this one, like the interface. So HCI is one of the area, one of the area in computer science. Human computer interaction. Like the AR augmented reality, VR, the virtual reality, or the uh, hologram, or the touch the interface, all of these are the human computer interaction. So HCI from the user point of view. So we are very familiar with such a the operating system from the user view. But from now on, in this class, we are going to see the operating system from hardware point of view. We don't know what's going on behind when we run my program. Have you ever thought about the, so you took the C++ class, so compiled with the, uh, the uh, the your program and run program is very nice, fantastic. Then, have you ever thought about the what's going on inside your computer? How my program is running? And uh, so, if my program is slow, why is it slow? Is the algorithm problem? The algorithm, my the code that has the problem, and the why it affect your performance? So, we are going to see such a details of the data structure, uh, the how operating system is working. So when a user uses a computer system, then so we will to learn more speed up. We are going to use the PowerPoint for your understanding. Okay, so let's 
So what is the operating system? So what's your definition of the what's your the idea of the operating system? Uh, I believe it's like the single process that holds everything together. That you single process. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to buy the operating system. Mm -hmm. So what will you bring to me? This. This. So operating system everything. It's uh, in terms of software. Okay. So when you purchase a Windows 10, so Windows 10 includes not only just the shell or the uh, something the kernel program, but it has even the uh, Microsoft Explorer. That causes a problem. It's a monopoly issue. <laughs> 10 years ago, the European, the EU actually sued the Microsoft because uh, the uh, Microsoft put everything inside the operating system. Actually, the, um, if, we, if we define the operating system very, very conservatively, so operating system is just a corner process, the first process, because that started the, uh, the, your computer. But the Microsoft actually, the world is, uh, is very flexible. It's uh, the, everything. They try to put the notepad and the uh, clock and uh, everything. So people, when they possess the Microsoft Windows 10 or Windows, they have everything. So they don't have to buy the other process, uh, other software. So it's not fair. So that was the reason why the EU sued the Microsoft before. Then the, it's uh, actually the Microsoft, uh, the, uh, the setup. The, with a lot of money like that. Okay, so there's no general definition of the operating system, but if we uh, are very flexible, and then operating system is everything in terms of software in our computer. But if you are very conservative, the operating system can be defined as the kernel process, the first process. So uh, a lot of developers, they are the because sometimes it's uh, hard to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the 95, the mask. I'd better change it to the lower filter. Mm -hmm. So when you, uh, I forgot this one. But anyway, so we will go. So if you are very conservative, the operating system, oh yeah. So still nowadays, a lot of developers and computer scientists, they uh, contribute their effort to on the developing new kernel, new operating system. Okay, so they, so if you check the Linux, Linux has the uh, open source, the, the operating system, so everybody can use their the source code. Then the, if you want to add your own functionality to the Linux kernel, then the, you can the, make the new operating system. So that is the reason we have the Ubuntu, Red Hat, and the CentOS, and the uh, Fedora, a lot of the Linux operating system because that is the main corner of the deep operating system. Okay? So we already discussed about the, uh, the operating system, uh, the computer, the organization, then the, we can, as you, you can see, So I can use the annotate. Okay, so then why is not but it took the database classes. So DBMS is a software to deal with the very large data with a specific the database model. So if the DBMS used the relational database model, it's called the relational database management system. So do you think the DBMS is the application program or operating system? Application. Application program. However, if you take a look at the functionality of the DBMS, like Oracle or MySQL. So MySQL, Oracle, they have their own data structure for the data file. File system, okay, and also the database create their own database processes. How to write the data? DB writer. The how to write the raw data? Raw writer. Such a thing. So they manage the uh, process. These are the main. Also, database require 
dedicated area of the memory. So for example, Oracle use the SGA, System Global Area. So when you start the DBMS system, it reserves the half of the physical memory. Then that, can, that the area will be used by only DBMS system. So memory management. So process memory to the file system. So this is the operating system. So it is, there is so funny story, the long time before, I think the 10, 15 years ago, Oracle actually tried to develop the database operating system. Because they huge rely on the operating system, why not? To integrate with their the DBMS with the operating system. Then they don't have to pay for the operating system, just a user purchase the database that work with the operating the computer system as if they are using operating system. But it was failed. So they that project didn't work very well. There were several reasons. But uh, it makes it's uh, true. So the some of the application program directly deal with the hardware. So it's not clear the clear boundary of the application program and the system operating system. So so from the Operating system point of view, like a Microsoft, they try to put more and more application program uh, area into the, the operating system. Okay. So, then the what operating system can do, we already discussed a lot. So there are many the discussion, a lot of discussion about the what operating system can do, but the, I like the uh, definition like the, this one. Everything a vendor shift when you order an operating system. That's a simple definition, but it's too broad. Right? So we can divide the something the uh, precisely define the more from from in terms of functionality. So we'd like to define the operating system. So that is I like the, this definition. So an operating system is a program because it's a software. That is true. It's not hardware. So that's true. So it's a program that control and coordinate the use of a hardware resource. So our the main goal of using computer is we would like to use utilize a computing power, computer resource, which is a flex in terms of the calculation. So like the CPU, then the memory hard. Uh, to speed up the chip to access the data. Then the, uh, the secondary storage file system provide more storage. So, which means computer processor a lot, huge amount of data. So, this is the resource. But that resource is not unlimited. So, for example, if the computer resource is unlimited, infinite power, you don't need the, such a the very expensive operating system, right? So CPU is, for example, the, uh, the unlimited power. So we can just run, 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 run. Even we don't have to stop because it's unlimited. The memory, the, we don't have to worry about the starting and the whatever or the management just because it's unlimited. Unfortunately, our resource is limited always. So we need to Coordinate, okay. We need to manage, coordinate the uh, the such a the limited resource. So that is the one of the main job of operating system. Who will see such a how to coordinate the limited resource is the algorithm used in computer operating system, like the scheduling. So because uh, a lot of process compete. Uh, the race to use the limited CPU. CPU is one. The, even though you are using the code core, so only just a four of the thread. Uh, how many processes? 100, 200. They, they compete each other. So we need to schedule. Otherwise, only one process can take the all the resources. Then the, uh, the, your computer is not working properly. So that is the control, coordinate. Okay. To coordinate, you should be able to control the, your hardware. So that's the reason. So three part, the operating system uh, is the software algorithm that control, okay, control the, your hardware 
for what? To coordinate the limited resource hardware. Okay? Then, in other words, we, do, we direct to maximize the utilization of the resource to get the better performance. So that is the, uh, the definition. I like that. But uh, that's not the only who are complete the definition. So it can be viewed differently. But this is a kind of general definition of the operating system. Okay. So we already uh, the spend a lot of time and also you know the much about the computer system organization, but it's still the very important. So no matter what you are doing in computer science, like the programming or algorithm, and eventually we are going to use a computer. We should know more about the computer. So for example, if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a dating, you should know that you're the partner, right? Even though you the, write the fancy nice message for her, but that doesn't mean so you love the, each other. The most important thing is you know the, your partner. So same thing, when you are using computer, so you know the algorithm, you know the uh, CNN or the neural network, RNN or the linked list of such data structure. Why do we need such a thing? We'd like to use the research of the computer. So you'd better know why we need the link list, why we need the stack, why we need the, such a, the, the algorithm uh, when we are using computers. So computer system organization is always the, the important, but not many students are taking the uh, computer architecture or computer organization. Also, the, even though the importance of the I'm, uh, the emphasis on the, the importance of the uh, computer system organization. Please read the textbook or the watch the YouTube at least it, or the, uh, the read the Wikipedia if you don't want to read the textbook, the understanding the computer system organization. Okay. We will discuss more details about the intro. Most of the modern operating system, computer system, is based on the intro. Why? Have you ever heard about the interface, the computer system? I mean, is it like the, uh, the language of the computer? Mm, it can be used by the language. So what is intro, by the way? You heard about the name of intro before yeah. in computer. So this is the CPU timeline. So, unfortunately, I have the single processor, single core. So, which means, how many instructions can you process at a certain time? One. Just one. But how many the processes you have? Many. Multitasking. Then how can you address? We need to control. Then how can you control? One. We can schedule, right? So this one is first one, second, third, and uh, tenth, right? CPU can check this one, this one, this one, like the, this. But it takes some time, why? Because for example, if I take care of the, uh, all each and every student in this class, so Tanya, do you understand? And uh, so do you understand? And this one, it will take, I cannot do my job, right? Instead. Whenever I'm doing the, my job, like the teaching, lecture, like this, then if you have a question, you can raise your hand, right? And interrupt the, my lecture. And I can take care. If you do not have a question, you don't have to. If you want to use the, my resource, you can interrupt. So this is the, basically the signal. It's a computer signal the to communicate each other. Eventually, they try to use the CPU resource. Then how can you use the CPU? Without CPU, you cannot do anything. Even you cannot read the data. How can you read the data? There is an instruction to read the data, which means the instruction is processed by the CPU. CPU activates the I, even when you read the data. It's a system called like the write, I read. Later, we will see the more details about the system library. So this one will be called by the, your program language. Like the integer, I don't know, integer, 
name read a dot txt write option like the linear program. That this system code is uh, the use that the, this one has a number of instruction assembly language to read the data. So this when a CPU process the, this instruction, then the ask to the disk drive to read the data, certain data. Okay. Then what if, what happened when the disk the disk controller has the request the data at the time interval. So I'm ready. So I asked you to read the get the textbook from the library and the, you are coming. Then the, you uh, should let me know. So professor, I ready for your request the data. Then the CPU stop and let take care of this. But if we CPU need to check every time whether the shadow the bring the my request. No. So next time request, request, request. Okay. Then it's a slow. The CPU your computer will be slow. So this is one example when you read. Because the input and output IO operation is the most important, the operation in computer system. At that time, we can use such an interrupt base. So interrupt basically has the two parts. One is hardware interrupt. Like, the, for example, in this case, the, who is in charge of the interrupt? Disk controller. So all device, I/O device has a controller. Why? So like the, for example, when I, uh, it's uh, probably twenty, longer than twenty years ago. So when I purchased a new hard disk drive, it's the uh, one hundred megabyte, and uh, I spend the more than I pay the more than the hundred bucks at the time. Oh, really true. It was really expensive. Nowadays, the one terabyte is uh, 50 bucks, like that. But it was very expensive. So, but uh, even when I purchased the hard disk drive, so I uh, uh, put the hard disk drive into the slot. It can be PCI slot or the ISO slot. So, so in our uh, the computer system, in my computer, the slot, but still, I cannot use. I need to install device program. So as I said at the beginning, the computer has a lot of I.O. devices. So they BIOS program check the all I.O. device physical. It's a hardware. But that doesn't mean that you are able to use the, this one. Each the device has their own instruction. So, for example, this one is different from the next. So they have their own language. They have their own the mechanism. So to understand that there is a controller, it's the called a device program. So that is the reason, like uh, for example, Microsoft has the roadmap to the next 20 years almost. So we are going to release Windows 11 for something like that. There is a vendor company who has developed the hard disk drive. They always provide, check the roadmap of the operating system, then whether this is compatible with them. Okay. Then the, if they have the agreement with the operating system company, they actually include the device program as a part of the operating system. So you don't have to. But nowadays, a lot of such a thing are standalone. So you don't have to install the separately, but the very specific the hard hardware, so which is not compatible with the general purpose operating system. You need to download the device program and install. For example, yesterday, I tried to install the uh, Cydia program, which is not uh, the compatible with the Mac OS nowadays. So I download the program device program and the Cydia port is the device program for the serial port is installed. It's just to use the TX and RX port and send the uh, very basic data. Even that is not the, uh, the understood by the operating map OS. So I need to install the device program. Then, such a device program that controller, 
when this, this controller knows how to get the data. So should inform to the operating system. How? Intro signal. Send the intro signal, then the, the operating system, this classroom will be stuck, then take care of your request. Like that. So this is the interface, the computer system. Nowadays, most of the computer system is based on the intro. That is a hardware intro. Then another one, maybe software intro. So software intro has the two parts. One is operating system. Operating system is also the, uh, the intro. So operating system defines some the event of the your the in the computer operating system. Then the send the signal to the computer. Then the uh, next the you need to take care of the, this process like that. And the another one is just uh, it's not application level like the special event like the by the program like the you can imagine the try and catch in Java program. So what is a try and catch? Between inside the try, if something happens, you can do something. Mostly used for the error handling. So that is the, the software that is the intro. Most popular one is divide by zero. The computer cannot handle divide by zero because it's infinite. So in case of divide by zero, so intro the, uh, the computer, then there's an error handling. So start the computer. And also, another popular one for the intro is what happened? Unfortunately, my program is uh, the infinity loop. How can you start infinity loop? Um, it's like how can you start? So turn off your computer. The the loop. Loop infinity. You, loop. you use um what is it called? Usually uh, uh, I by like user input like okay. exit of the command. How can you exit? The, if there is no exit, the the routine. Control C. Yeah, control C. But it's a control C. It's an interrupt signal. So control C generates the interrupt signal. So control C is not the bad thing. It's just uh, the, from the input keyboard. So control C creates the, the interrupt signal. So then the, uh, your program will be interrupted, stop. Okay. So that is the interface. So we will see more details about the, such a the hardware interrupt, software interrupt, and the operating system interrupt. It's fun to understand. So what happened after intro? Each intro has the uh, default event, the address. So operating system actually point for the each event, each intro to the memory location that memory has the function to handle it. Okay. So then why do we have the, such a mechanism? So to speed up, to speed up the computer system. So as I said, uh, if I take care of every request one by one, it takes a time. Instead, in case of intro request, I can take care. When I take care of your the intro, so if you raise the left hand, left hand is the solution is here. So I the, uh, push the button for them. Then that's it. Then I can do my job. So this one is a memory and the event vector. Then the each the event the intro has a specific the event vector ID. Then that uh, ID has the a uh, function to address the request. That's such a the intro. Okay. Try is to call it the uh, like the try and catch the user created the intro. We will see the more details. Okay. Then next one is the uh, storage structure. Uh, storage structure. Okay. So this one.
So, what is the fastest storage in our computer system? RAM. RAM? RAM is here. Okay, I'm going to use this one. RAM is here. So this is a RAM. On top of that, there is another one. Cache. Cache. So, cache is uh, very interesting. So, you heard about the cache a lot. So, what is the main purpose of cache? Um, quick access to... Um, quick data. access. And there's a similar concept. It's a buffer. What is the difference between the buffer and cache? Um, cache gives the, give the, give the information until I will use it again for the same same thing. Right. Yeah. And what is, is the, the buffer? Hmm. I think buffer is when you're transferring from another place, so you kind of need to store it temporarily. Like so two different therapies. So usually different bandwidth, different speed. So where can you find the buffer when you drive? When you drive. Uh, so land, when you go out the land, mm -hmm. right? Usually there is the, the sandbox or water box in case of you hit, right? Which means it's a high speed, but the barrier is the zero speed. So you will, you will be hurt. So in between, there is a buffer to reduce the speed then the minimize the impact. Same thing, when you have the net, think about the network. So networks, uh, you're the, I like to watch the Major League Baseball. It's a high definition, but uh, uh, my the, the cell phone still uses a 3G. So it's a slow bandwidth. So you can put the buffer area. The slow speed and the lagger, you can the show, display. I cannot realize. But uh, there is a waiting time the beginning. After that, I cannot uh, feel the difference. So that is the buffer. On the other hand, the cache is, as uh, he mentioned, cache can be reused. When you access the data, you don't have to read it again. Instead, you can put such uh, the data in the fast the medium. Usually, such a fast media, fast storage is expensive. So you cannot keep the huge size. It's so much smaller. But this is kind of 80 20 rules. So, in anywhere, in the information theory, 80 20 rule is if you have the 100, the size of the data, you only access 20% of the data. So, think of, the, consider your the cell phone. How many photos do you have in your the cell phone? Uh, a lot. A lot. So probably the I think the half of the my storage is <laughs> occupied by the used by the uh, porter. Yeah. How many of them do you the see? Do you like look at? Yeah. Probably like two percent. Every day? Every day everything? Probably not. You will see the just a recent one, but the, when you say so sometimes you can when you miss your the friend or the family, then oh, once a year you can check. Not frequently, but the you keep because it's important. It's the same thing in business and same thing in the most of computer. So even I have the 200 gig, the hard hard disk drive is almost used, but actually practically I I'm using only less than 10 percent of data every day. The other rarely used. Even half of them, more than half of them, never been used last year. So that is true. So. It's the same thing, it's not your fault, so it's not only you, all the system, all the uh, person, user, it's the same thing. It's called the 80-20, only 20% of data being used. Then, you can get the math, the, such a, you can use such a characteristic of the data access, 20%. So why not uh, put the 20 data in the first media? So that is you call the cache. The problem is, uh, how can we manage such a, the uh, cache data? Because it's uh, in and out. So not always uh, I can watch the same the photo. Maybe tomorrow it will be changed. So frequently used one will be top priority. 
needs to use one is the less priority, like that. So there are errors. So what we see even uh, in the operating system, especially in the memory management, we will see how to manage the, the, such a cache data. So this is the cache. So there are, then the finally register. Register is the storage inside the CPU, the processor, as we discussed before. So this is a processor, then the, there is a storage, like the register one, register AX, BX, you learn in your microprocessor class. Then, this cache is also several different layers. So L1 cache and L2 cache. So if you check the, your the system configuration, like uh, for example, the, uh, how about this man? Oh, this is not shared. Okay. So if you check the, your the system configuration, so there is uh, information about the size of L1 cache, size of L2 cache. So L1 cache is uh, inside the, your the, uh, the chip the CPU, and L2 cache is larger than the L1 cache. L2 cache is, uh, if you have a multi-core, like the dual core, so L2 cache resides on the this one. Then there can be, so even though there is a uh, request to read the data, if there is cache data on the L1 or L2 cache, so then the, that will be used. They don't have to go to the lower speed. So this is a memory. Then memory is not deep enough to keep all our data. So we have the file system, secondary storage, like this. So we will uh, discuss more details about the, such as the storage, the hierarchy, and the data structure, how to manage. So uh, the later. So second project will be creating the file system, your own file system. Based on such an idea, so undergraduate student is uh, optional, but the graduate student will be required. Okay, so that is a cache, and uh, DMA is nowadays uh, is uh, the very popular. So most of the the current modern operating system use a direct memory access structure. Idea is a simple. How can you read the data? Do you read the data without CPU? No. no. So byte by byte, the CPU requests. Actually, it's not the entire the file information when you read. So actually, byte by byte, the CPU requests. Request means what? Instruction. Specific instruction will be the code will be used to read the data. So if you read uh, one megabyte, how many system? How many instructions will be used? One megabyte, one million of instructions. If we read the, the one gigabyte, thousand million instructions. It takes some time. But the mostly, the characteristic of the file is, so after June, June can read. So this is the, oh, by the way, what is the file? What is a file? Block of information, relation. You, how many files do you have in your computer? I mean, a lot. Without file, you cannot do it. Even the Instagram, TikTok, email, so all of these data will be stored, eventually stored at the file, right? Yeah. It's a cloud, or Facebook, or the Microsoft, or wherever, but it's a file. Then what is a file? Actually, file is a very simple. It's a byte string. So byte is how many bit? 8 bit. So 8 bit is the minimum unit to store the data. For example, ASCII code. So you can A, ASCII code is 8 bit, right? 8 bit is required to keep the data. So, file is actually byte string. Until where? 
E O F. End of file. E O F. So starting and end. So no matter what type of file you have, the images by string. Text data, definitely by string. Audio, MP3 file by string. Okay? So in terms of operating system, in terms of from the computer point of view, file is a byte string. So when you watch the movie, computer CPU use the system library to read byte by byte. But such a file is like the byte string. It's next to each other. So if we use one instruction, one instruction per byte, it takes a longer time. So once we start to watch the movie, one gigabyte the movie will be streamed next to each other. So why not bypass using CPU? Instead, the once the this one is read, next one will be without CPU instruction going to the memory directory, memory directory, memory directory until we are end of file. That is called the DMA, direct memory access. Huge benefit in terms of speed. Because when you check the library group, so I asked the all the uh, computer science textbook, then you bring the, this one. Is it okay? Is it okay? It takes some time. Instead, once I ask the you can the bring all computer science textbook to the uh, the classroom, then the, I can check at the end. So it saves a lot of time. So this is the direct memory access, the DME architecture. So most of the operating system support the, this DME. We will see a little bit more details the later when we talk about the storage. There is a lot the interesting story. Funny things, uh, not funny things, so interesting the story for the system demon and the zombie process and the so on. We will see it later. So there is a zombie in computer system. The zombie process. And there is a demon also. Demon process. What's the difference? So we will see. There's a little bit uh, uh, always a uh, little bit confused. Multitasking and multi-program. So what's the difference? Multitasking and uh, multi-program. Um, multitasking is to do more application at the same time. Mm -hmm. What about the multi-program? Multi-programming, I guess, um, reading and writing at the same time. <laughs> it's a multi program. So multitasking you understand. So we need to so when we have the only one thread of CPU, so single core, single processor. So we need to share. Right? When we have the many processes like the, this one. So you can divide the chart the CPU time and assign this, assign this, and the so on. This is called the multitasking. Okay? So most of your computer support the multitasking. What about the multi program? Uh, it's running all of them at the same time, say different threads. Uh, close, but not exactly. Have you ever used uh, this operating system, EOS, DOS? Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. I thought uh, this only for the 40 years old. <laughs> So MS-DOS, for example, DOS is the, one of the oldest uh, the operating system. Then the, actually, the Bill Gates the, developed, the, uh, create a new operating system, Windows, on top of this one. So MS-DOS. Then uh, with the Windows, the GUI, and the combine these two. Actually, not combine, put the two operating system under one, the umbrella, under the roof. Same roof, there were. that caused a huge problem before at the time. It was simple to develop the first time, but because they used uh, two different uh, operating systems, it may cause the problem. Then, uh, after the Windows 95, throw away 
the loose part. Instead, they put the CMD. CMD is kind of the just the, the fake, the interface, fake question. Then the people, especially the developer or the expertise like us, the complain a lot. Then the move changes into the macOS or Linux. So finally, the Windows finally the the allow the Windows system fully uh, running based on the Linux kernel. So if you wanna the, uh, run your the Windows 10 the operating system based on the Linux, like the, you can select the Ubuntu, you can select the other, you are able to. So it's not great that you can update. Then the, it's uh, I think the April May the 2020 the Windows finally announced. So you can the, use the, your Windows kernel fully based on the Linux system. It's uh, based on the virtual machine technology. But those long time ago run how many programs? Only one program. Which means single program will be loaded into the memory. What if next program you need to swap, change? So this is a single program operating system. Nobody wants this. Why? Because the swap takes longer time. Okay? Simple operating system, simple computer is okay, but general purpose like the Windows or the macOS, no. So most of the operating systems support the multi-program operating system, which means multiple processes will be loaded to the memory. Okay? It looks like the simple, but it's not that simple. Why? What is a memory? What is a memory? Uh, a storage unit. It's a storage, yes, it's true. It's nothing but address. There is no, so for example, if we consider the, this building as a memory, so this building is nice because there is a work, so it's a private area, nobody hurts, so during the class, if I lock the door, it's a protected. Unfortunately, memory is not. Memory has only address. It's open to other, which means it may be possible if other process know the address of your the data, it may be the access because there is no word fence, no fence inside the memory. So you need to protect. So protection is very important when you allow multiple programs. Because of that, the so old computer, the pop up the memory error where the memory access error, something like that. Okay. But nowadays it's much better, but the still protection is a hot issue in the memory. Okay. Because there's, it's like the open field. This is my land, but how do you know this is my land? This is your land, how do you know? The long time ago is a western, the, uh, so you can put the flag then this is my land. But it's not very clear the where is the boundary like that. So it's the same thing in the memory. So to support the multi program. Okay, so I spend uh, uh, more time, but uh, please read the rest of the textbook. So I'm going to quickly go over the last part of the chapter one and also chapter two. They are not uh, the major the part of the operating system yet is introductory. So you already know. So, so I a little bit spend the time, like the warm up for the new semester to understand the, uh, the computer organization as well as uh, some basic, very basic concept of the operating system. But next class, I'm going to speed up. So please, the read the textbook, at least the read the uh, lecture notes the, during the uh, the weekend, then I'm going to speed up the rest part of the chapter one and uh, cover the chapter two also. Also, next class we will create the virtual machine uh, for your practice, so you can be ready uh, for the exercise <laughs> with uh, just computer. So if you 
uh, coming to the class the next week, Wednesday, bring your laptop, then we can activate. Or uh, otherwise, you are able to activate the Fortex uh, and coupon code uh, through online. I'm going to send out the coupon code and the link the, during the weekend. Okay. Professor, yes. if you're using Linux on your computer, you still can you just do all the exercises? So if you have the virtual machine for the Linux, so it's so fine you just, to use. You're just using the whole Linux. Uh, but uh, for your practice, if you are familiar with already GCP, so you don't have to the create, but uh, if uh, this is your first time, why don't you uh, the create the virtual machine? But as long as you are using the Linux, the, any of the Linux is fine. Okay. And stop share. Any questions? I asked the, the I doctor, is there any way to avoid such a thing? No. So if I have the idea, I'd be super rich. No way. <laughs> uh, buffer is the data structure to bridge the gap between the high speed bandwidth and lower speed bandwidth. So then the, the buffer area, we can keep the low bandwidth, the data, to support the high speed bandwidth. So that is the buffer. Okay, thanks so much for your coming and the joining. Uh, the, through the June, the second class of the semester, we will continue the, this format. Uh, next class. Next class, we do not have a lecture on Monday. Instead, we will meet on Wednesday. Monday is a Labor Day, it's a holiday. If you want, you can come. But I will not be here. No. <laughs> Uh, is there any time for the spray? I'm, but uh, when I met the eye doctor, they said uh, no. So I will try. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. A HW is out, what does it mean? Hardware? Just in the, uh, what does it mean HW? Uh, homo. Uh, homo. Yeah, so you can check the uh, Homo on Canvas. So Canvas assignment is already available. Okay, so thank you. Most important thing is to stay safe. So in case something happens, this class should be online. So please uh, help me and uh, thank for your cooperation. We will see you next week.